All right, finally I got an opportunity to do some practical tests again. So I'm here with Christopher, who kindly offered to let me use his land here, which is far better than the other options I've had so far. Uh, he's also a blacksmith, and he's got a YouTube channel as well, which I'm going to link down below. And uh, he also has two healthy shoulders, which helps with archery. So we're going to do that. I've got a ballistic gel target set up over there, and we're just going to compare different bows and see how it goes. Yeah. And Anyway, let's get going. Okay, I went all the way through this far in. All right, so this one here didn't hit a lot of gel, that was mainly styrofoam. So here we are at, what is this, eight and a half inches. I don't like inches, but it'll have to do. <laughs> I have to convert. Okay, and this was more gel. Six inches. There we go, six. And this one does the thickest part. So here we are at, what is it, five and a half. All right. Now we're going to try an obsidian point for comparison. This was a broken arrow, so I put this foreshaft on. Hopefully it'll hold up. It's glued and wrapped and then glued some more. It's going to be shot with the same 35-pound bow. That one hit the ground. I didn't get it on the slow-mo footage because it looked like it missed, but uh, it must have hit a rock or something, so the point snapped off. I guess I made it a little narrower than it should have been, but this should still work, I think. So this hit right at the edge of the dummy and see what we've got here. Six inches. So we have five, a bit less than five. What's that? Four and a half, four and three quarters. Yeah, no, wait, it's and more four and a half. Four and a half, yeah. yeah. Considering that it's broken, that's not too bad. All right, looks like these arrows don't penetrate as well as the others because despite higher draw weight, we only got about three and a quarter. So this point is a little thicker. Goes to show how much of a difference that makes. And here, we've got four and a quarter. That went in considerably further. So here, oh yeah, wow, look at that. So that's 
just a tad over 13 inches. Well, no, actually, not pretty much exactly 13. So here we've got the hunting broadhead. This should be a little harder to get out. There we are. Oh, it's tearing things up in there. Okay. So here we've got... Uh, looks like a bit over 15. All right. And we've got, looks like we've got six and a half. And this of course is substantially thicker than the arrows. tearing up the gel on the way out. Okay, so when it hits at the thickest part of the gel, we are at five and a half. Okay, now onto the obsidian point. I'm not sure if anybody has ever tried this before, but I figure it would be interesting to do this anachronistic experiment of putting an obsidian point on a medieval crossbow bolt. Let's see how that goes. So this was a broken bolt that I joined here with a new piece of wood. We'll see how it goes. I made this obsidian point here by a flint napping. Of course, with this one I had to miss and hit the dirt. There's a little bit that chipped off. Not too bad. I did a bit of field repair on this point. I didn't have my napping tools on me, but I just used my pry bar here as an improvised pressure flaking tool and you can see where there are fresh flakes taken off right there oh wow huh. so much for that so yeah the dowel I used to repair this with just didn't hold up crappy wood. Where is it? Uh, it's some, somewhere in there stuck. Oh, I, I, I can feel it. The leverage forced the, the point down and then it, it broke this piece of wood off there. So it didn't get a lot of penetration. That's unfortunate. Point is still fine. Well, after the repair, but... Well, we're done with this one. Okay, so here I've got a modern compound crossbow. This is the Barnett Ghost 400 and you'll see the difference between the two. This one actually has a lower draw weight than the medieval crossbow but the power stroke here is essentially just this. From where the string comes to rest to here. Five inch draw. This on the other hand goes all the way from here to there. So we've, we've got, let me see here, we've got a whooping 15, 15 and a half. So that's a bit over three times the length. And you'll see why that makes a difference. Then. 
it went so deep that just a tiny little piece is sticking out and it's all went right through here Let's see can you grab a hold of it I probably have to pull that off first yeah that's the fletching wow that's in there pretty good there we are okay so I don't even need to measure well, I mean, we can measure the, the length of the entire thing, pretty much. So it was all the way up to, 21. yeah, about, yeah, 20, 20 and a half. Oops, there we go. So about 20 and a half. <laughs> That's just ludicrous. That's how much difference it makes. I mean, this one is also a pretty narrow point. That makes a difference as well. But we'll see how the broadheads do. Looks like I missed. Oh wait. Nope. <laughs> it went all the way through the gel, the entire thing. So I've got 21 inches. The entire bolt. <laughs>